Alright, what's up guys? We are back for the second video of the day, and in this video we're discussing the best picks of the 2022 NFL Draft. And by best picks, for clarity purposes, I mean the best value in terms of where a team selected a specific player. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this. It's pretty simple here. Let's just go ahead and go to the Baltimore Ravens. To get Kyle Hamilton at 14 was a steal. Tyler Linderbaum at 25. With the positional value, it's not like they got a top three or top four pick at 25. But in terms of overall player rankings, that's very good value at 25. And with David Ajabo at 45, this is a team that's looking to make a deep postseason run. And this is a team that was 8-3 and three or 8-4 and four last year through... 11 or 12 games, and then they dropped, I want to say, the final five or six because instead of an injury bug, they caught the injury animal. And with David Ajabo, this is a player that's going to come back during a potential postseason run, and he's going to be looking to get after the quarterback with his teammate, now teammate, Odafe Owe. They're going to be looking to get after Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, any other quarterback in the AFC, and those guys are going to do a good job at doing that. And then, you know, as if that's not enough, but wait, there's more. Let's go ahead and give Travis Jones a top 35, top 40 player at worst at 76 at a position you will need to fill. They re-signed Michael Pierce this offseason, re-signing as in they re-signed him to the team because he was a former player. He was a free agent after being released by the Minnesota Vikings. Daniel Falele at 110. I mean, guys, these are all tremendous value here. The only one where you can say, like, maybe it wasn't great value uh, were the corners. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis, and this isn't even bad. It's not like Armour Davis was, like, the 200th ranked player at 119. We're talking the difference of maybe 15, 20 spots. And, again, when you're in the fourth round, is it really that big of a deal? Uh, you get two good tight ends in Charlie Kohler and Isaiah Likely. Good tight ends, meaning relative to where they are selected. This overall draft class is an easy A+. And Tyler Beatty, a running back, instead of having Le'Veon Bell, instead of having just everyone that they had last year, Devontae Freeman and any other running back, you get a good player to play behind J.K. Dobbins and Gus Bus in case either one of them get hurt. I can't say enough how much I love the Ravens draft class. And from one team on Interstate, or right near Interstate 95, we'll go ahead and go to another it's the Philadelphia Eagles. They, I don't know how you want to say this, but A.J. Brown at 18 overall, he was he right now is better than any receiver in the 2022 NFL draft class, so we will include that. Jordan Davis at 13 is, to me, is a good football player. And I think he's going to be a player in a couple of years where NFL teams are going to look back and ask, why did we overthink this? Because surely, I hate to sound like this, there's going to be a player in the top 12 picks that will become an NFL draft bust. Statistically, if there is not, then it would be like it would be like a 95 degree day in Alaska in January. It's just it, the statistical probability of that happening is extremely low. And Jordan Davis is, for what his physical attributes are, the height, the weight, the speed, he's one of one. And I think we're going to have a conversation in a couple years where it's kind of like, why didn't we just take a good football player? Why did we overthink this? But Jordan Davis at 13, tremendous value. Uh, tr uh, Jason Kelsey said over the past three years, the Eagles have been looking to replace him. Jason Kelsey was a guest on Bleacher Report's draft coverage, and he said there's no center that fits his game more than Cam Jurgens, and he was excited as hell that, the, that Philadelphia drafted him. Great value at 51. And I'm sure a lot of people initially were like, it's a little early for Cam Jurgens, but there was always a consensus that Jurgens was going to be taken higher than what mock drafts were. It wasn't uncommon to see Jurgens in the 65 to 75 area, that late two, early three. But for Philly to snag a future starter and a future long term starter at 51, great value. And as if that's not enough, this is under the assumption that he's going to stay healthy, but if N'Kobe Dean stays healthy for a couple of years, I mean, guys, the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie Roseman hit it out of the park. And there was obviously a gap in picks here, so Kyron Johnson, if he works out, if he's anything really more than 
a rotational or situational player, then that's a hit. And Grant Calcaterra, I think there is some potential here, but again, when you when you're picking in the sixth and seventh round, if you get anything more than a rotational player for a year or two, then it's a hit. But since we're here, there's a couple of other picks that I wanted to address that were that were it was great value for where they were selected. Calvin Austin, 138 overall. The only thing that worries me with Calvin Austin, because I do believe he is a good football player, is how much will he actually be able to used to be used in Pittsburgh's offense? Because you have Chase Claypool, you have Pat Fryermuth, of course you have George Pickens, that's not to mention Deontay Johnson, and then Najee Harris. You have a back who's going to get 250, 300 carries a year, in addition to four or five receiving targets already above you. So that's the only thing that worries me about Calvin Austin. I don't think he was anywhere close to the 138th best football player in this class. But that's great value, and that's obviously not to mention their 52nd overall pick in George Pickens, receiver from Georgia, who Kenny Pickett should... They should have chemistry, and they should grow pretty quick together when Pickens comes off that injury. Now, as we continue this video, there's a couple of teams that I've been very critical of over the past few months that I want to discuss because they had for their, I mean, forget for their standards, for their standards, it's a hundred out of 10, but for even regular team standards, they had great drafts. And we're going to start with the Seattle Seahawks. You get Charles Cross at nine, great tackle, good long-term starter for a team that's rebuilding for a team that Maybe lacks identity isn't the right word, but for a team that's not that good entering the 2022 year, I like what they're doing. I, I love their draft. Boye Mafe, another good starter for what looks like at this point five to six years. Kenneth Walker, a good running back. This, this was the selection where I was kind of eh, on just because of Rashad Penny and Chris Carson. I was kind of adding that one, but I do think Kenneth Walker can win me over on that one pretty easy just because if he's productive, if he rushes for a thousand yards in his rookie year, which very likely could happen, that's that's a pick where I can be flipped on pretty easily. Abraham Lucas, it's kind of a benefit that he played college football in Washington, so they were he was in their backyard. Can't say that about a lot of prospects for Seattle just because of how Northwest they are compared to everywhere else in the country. But we're talking about, guys, we're talking about four starters in the first th three rounds that they had with these guys. And then, you know, there's possibility of even more. Kobe Bryant, good corner, good value at 109. Tariq Woolen, this is, Richard Sherman was also on the Bleacher Report uh, coverage, and he was basically saying, you know, like, Pete loves, and he's a perfect example perfect example of that, the big corners, and Tariq Woolen's 6'4", 200, that four, his mock draftable is like 99th percentile in nearly everything, the height, weight, speed, he's like 6'4", 200, but the weight's probably not in the 99th percentile, but that 4'2", 40 at that height is truly something you can't teach. And for Seattle to hit it out of the park like this, I love it. And I want to get something clear, though. Drew Locke right now is their quarterback. Could Baker Mayfield become their quarterback for 2022? Yes. But with Seattle, I don't think they're going to... They're not going to win the NFC West this year. And that's fine. But they're setting themselves up for a better tomorrow. And that's a lot more that can be said over some of their previous drafts. The only question that I have here, the only point of concern where I was just, I kind of had a question mark, not even the Kenneth Walker part, because that's something that can very easily be taken care of, but Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas, these guys played in the very, of course, Charles Cross played for Mike Leach himself. Abraham Lucas played in a system that is a descendant of Mike Leach, if you will, and that's known for the vertical passing attack, you know, where they don't run the ball a whole hell of a lot. So my only question for Seattle was if you're going to have a, you know, a bruising running back like Kenneth Walker, who broke like 18 tackles in one game against the U alone, the, the two tackles you selected don't really 
gel with that. And that would be the only concern I have with their class in terms of that. But even Tyreek Smith at 158, that's, I hate to keep saying great value, even though it is, but I like the upside with that late of a pick. Bo Melton, again, same deal. Derek Young is quite literally a dart throw from Lenore Ryan in the seventh round, in the late seventh round. But Bo Melton is a seventh rounder, if I had to bet on, that could catch maybe 20, 25 passes in a season for a receiver taken that late. That's pretty good. And the other team that I loved, you don't say this a lot about them either. And there's a reason they've had back-to-back picks in the top three. And that's the Houston Texans. Stingley is grand slam or strikeout swinging. And I respect them for taking this chance. I think at minimum, he's going to be a starter for probably three or four years. Minimum. You're obviously hoping for more. But Kenyon Green, while taken, while it was a bit shocking just because everyone thought he was going to go in the early to mid 20s. If you get a long term starter at guard for seven, eight, nine years, what does it matter if it's taken six picks early in the first round? I mean, we're not talking one and seven overall. We're talking middle of the first. So don't have a problem with that. Jalen Petrie, another good guy that I'm sure Lovey probably handpicked to play in his secondary. John Mechie, you need weapons. They certainly did not have a lot of weapons last year for Davis Mills. And whether Davis Mills is the long term guy for them or not, we'll soon find out probably over the course of the next two years, unless they are absolutely just horrifically bad this year. But Christian Harris, an inside linebacker, love it. Damian Pierce. This was a player I was low-key, I liked a lot. I liked him and Tyler Algier, which was an Atlanta Falcons pick that we'll get to in a couple minutes. But Damian Pierce, I mean, guys, we're talking with the Texans. You have one, two, three, four, five potentially potentially six starters from one class that's i mean that's guys that's insane and again the the houston texans the same thing can be said with the seattle seahawks though i expect the texans to be worse record wise they're not going to win the afc this year they're not going to come out shock everybody win 14 games but for a team that aside from the success they had with deshaun watson which was capped out at a divisional round exit because There were still a lot of flaws on that roster, even when they had Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, Bill O'Brien, and J.J. Watt. You're building something. And I really, really like the direction that they're heading in. And speaking of the Atlanta Falcons, this was a class, I mean, this was a class I loved. They took two of my favorite pass rushers, D'Angelo Malone especially. Arnold Abakade, and with that being one of the most important positions in football, and at a position Atlanta has lacked at for not, you know, not the back half of 2021, not 2021, for years, to come out with two, two guys that show traits, show flashes, that they can be players in the NFL for a long, long time, is nothing short of a ginormous win. Justin Schaefer, John Fitzpatrick, they're, they're sixth round dart throws. If they work out, cool. If not, nothing hurt. Tyler Algier, guys, Cordero Patterson is 31 years old. He was taken back in 2013. And it's as a, as a Vikings fan, it's really cool to see him have success. And I'm happy for him. But, I mean, Cordero's not going to be there for three or four years. He's not going to be their running back. So there's a good chance that Algier can come in, not dethrone Cordero in week one or week two, but... Maybe by the back end of the season, depending on how good he's playing, and even 2023 at the worst, you're talking about maybe you get a starter in the fifth round. Desmond Ritter. I don't want to sit here and act like Desmond Ritter is going to be the long-term answer for the Atlanta Falcons, but if he is, then you get a franchise quarterback at 74. That is, When I say that, by the way, that is absolute pie in the sky. We are just tossing one up and, and praying we're hitting a home run with that one. But... I don't have a problem taking a quarterback in the third round. Near the middle of the third round, if you hit him, if you hit on a quarterback in the third round, that extends your that extends the GM and head coach's job by a couple of years. You know, they they didn't take Desmond Ritter at eight. They didn't take hell Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett at eight. They took 
a receiver that's going to help them cause mismatches, who we haven't even spoken about yet because that's how much I like their draft class, in Drake London. Drake London, Kyle Pitts. Now imagine if you have a competent quarterback out there. If you have a competent quarterback with, this is going to be a lot of projection here, but Tyler Algier, who is a power running back, he is a very strong and very physical back. And then you have Drake London and Kyle Pitts to worry about outside because they played Kyle Pitts outside during his rookie year. And again, this is a lot of projection, but how do you, what's your plan to try and stop that? You're going to give one-on-one with, with Drake and Kyle both? I mean, both those guys are 6'5", so what would be the plan? And if you, if you want to stack the box to try and stop Algier, okay, here, Kyle Pitts, here's a one-on-one. Go ahead and win it for me. Win it, make a 50-50 ball and 80-20 ball. So... I love the Atlanta Falcons class, and that's not something that I've said a lot over the past few years. I admittedly at the time was very questioned. I I didn't like the A.J. Terrell selection, but he proved me wrong. So once you get that quarterback situation figured out in Atlanta, it's looking like they're going to figure it out. At least, again, a lot of projection here, but they're hopefully going to figure it out at the end of the Tom Brady era, and then they can go from the you know the cellar dweller or the third or fourth place finish in the division and just skyrocket it up. So, again, absolutely love what the Atlanta Falcons did. Let's go for a couple more teams here. Oh, this was a team, by the way, the Denver Broncos. Their first and second round pick, Russell Wilson. So if you want to get in that conversation, they the best quarterback in the draft, in theory, they did get the best quarterback in the draft because of if, if you consider Russell Wilson that. But we're going to disregard that for this part of the video. Nick Benito was one of my favorite guys in the entire draft. I thought he was underrated the entire time. Uh, he had the highest pressure rate out of any pass rusher in the 2022 NFL draft class. Any of those boys taken in the first round, Nick Benito had a higher pressure rate. They also get Greg Dulcich, a good, you don't hear this a lot, but a good route running tight end. Damari Mathis, good corner from Pitt. And the rest of the guys, they're kind of, if they work out, they work out, cool. But to come away with these three guys, where they were, where they were selecting, as far as I'm concerned, Denver hit home runs relative to where they were on the clock and one final team that i want to discuss a little bit in depth here the indianapolis colts alec pierce admittedly i'm not the biggest fan of and you know this is the biggest winners video and i'm going to start off by saying i'm not the biggest fan of alec pierce but if he can be the robin to michael Pittman's batman and have jonathan taylor in the backfield and a tight end, I was very much hoping. In terms of dream NFL draft fits, I was hoping Jelani Woods would become an Indianapolis Colt. Because it makes it just makes so much sense for them to take Jelani Woods. But even for them to get Bernard Ryman at 77 in the middle of the third round, and then even a safety and Nick Cross at the end of the third round, You're talking two or three starters from this class, and that's not something every team can say. But I lied, actually. We're going to discuss one more team. Two more teams, sorry. We're going to start with the Chiefs. I I said this before, but, you know, you need a corner. You need a lot of secondary help to try and stop the other AFC teams. You get that in Trent McDuffie. You need pass rush help. You get that with George Karloftis. Get Patrick Mahomes another weapon. You get that with Sky Moore. Need a little more secondary help because Justin Reed won't be there forever. You get Brian Cook. Inside linebacker help. Pretty sure Damian Wilson left. Leo Chanel. Guys, the Chiefs are a successful organization year after year after year for a reason. But I want to get into the Jags now because I haven't discussed the Jags a whole hell of a lot because I'm not a big Trayvon Walker fan. So I'm not going to sit up here and applaud them and say that's an A++ pick because I right now don't think it is. But I loved the Devin Lloyd pick, and I loved the Chad Mumma pick. I To have those two linebackers start for you for a while, for the foreseeable future, for Jacksonville to come out of the class with that, I thought was some of the best value relative to where these guys were drafted. Devin Lloyd was routinely mocked at 15, 16, or 19 with Philly because they needed a linebacker. Philly got a linebacker at 83 in N'Kobe Dean. Jacksonville got a linebacker by trading up with Tampa at 27 and Devin Lloyd. They've played Darius Leonard every year for the past five. 
and they know how much of a pain in the ass it is to play him year after year after year, and now they have their own version in Devin Lloyd. Now, I hope Trayvon Walker works out. I really do. I, I don't sit here and hope that he fails to, so I can toot my own horn and say that they were wrong when they, they picked him. I don't wish that, nor do I ever. But I, I can't say enough how much I love the Devin Lloyd selection and how much I love the Chad Mama selection for the Jaguars. And that's all I'm going to have for today's video except to acknowledge that the Chargers got a beast in Zion Johnson at 17 overall and Jamari Sawyer at 195. Love that for them. But anyways, that's all I'm going to have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it would truly mean the world. And until next time, as always, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.